Okay, we're going to explore the rotational isomers of dopamine, how that relates to the small molecule apomorphine, or dopamine agonists in general. This is the structure of dopamine. There's the central phenyl ring here, the two oxygen atoms make up the catechol portion, then there's the side chain which has two carbon atoms and a nitrogen atom to make the ethylamine side chain. The ethylamine side chain prefers to be in an extended or trans conformation, and if we rotate it, you can see that that will permit minimization of the steric interactions between the phenyl ring here and the amine ring here. There's an additional sort of rotation that can also occur for dopamine, and this is what that rotation is. As we've drawn it here, this is the alpha rotamer, which puts the molecule of dopamine into a low energy minima. If we rotate that phenyl ring over the ethylamine side chain, we'll see that we are now at a second local energy minima. What that means is that there are two rotational isomers of dopamine, the beta rotamer that's shown here, or with rotation and going to the low energy well, the alpha rotamer as shown here. The small molecule apomorphine has similar features to dopamine, but it has some differences. Here is the catechol moiety, the phenyl ring that mimics the phenyl ring of dopamine, and if we rotate this way, you can see that there are two carbons and an amine that mimics the ethylamine side chain of dopamine. Unlike dopamine, there's an additional three rings to the tetracyclic structure of apomorphine. The first phenyl ring over here is tethered to a second phenyl ring here, and this bond effectively prevents rotation between the two forms that we saw in dopamine. The other two partially saturated rings are locked into a rigid conformation because of these additional carbon bonds that come off of this second phenyl ring. If we rotate this way, we can see that the ethylamine side chain of dopamine is mimicked very well by these two carbon atoms and this basic amine and apomorphine. Additionally, with this handle from the second phenyl ring, only the catechol moiety in this position is possible. Now, if we look at both molecules at the same time and rotate them a bit, we'll see that those structural similarities are very, very apparent. So, effectively, what dopamine does is it rotates freely. What apomorphine does is it doesn't rotate freely. And if we overlay the two molecules, you'll see that we've locked just the alpha rotamer into the structure of apomorphine. This alpha rotamer, which is shown and mimicked very well by apomorphine, is the shape of dopamine that behaves as an agonist at its receptors.